Hey there, I'm the GD&T guy, and you are on video four of a deep dive into a somewhat niche topic in the world of mechanical design, engineering drawings, and geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, aka GD&T. If you like what you hear in this video, please like and subscribe so you get the rest of them in your feed. Please also comment with your agreements and disagreements and help me identify any mistakes I've made. And in the video descriptions, I will post a link to where you can find PDFs of all the drawings I discuss so you can pause and look at them yourself. Okay, let's go. I'm talking in these videos about the use of dowel pins as locating features in machined parts and how to apply dimensions and tolerances to those on a drawing. In the last video, I showed you an example of a drawing that depicts a part as having a dowel pin pressed into it, creating an inseparable assembly. It even includes a table and some notes that very clearly indicate that I expect the supplier of this part to deliver it to me with the pin or the pins installed. And as I explained in that video, this part I want you to think of as being a detail area of a larger part. And we're just looking at this one little interface. Depicting the part as an inseparable is my preference, and I'll explain to you why. It makes a lot of sense from the GD&T perspective, but it may not be your preference, and there may be a very valid reason for that. For instance, from the perspective of process management, this part needs to be machined, maybe anodized, have pins pressed in, and get inspected. This makes sense if your machine shop can manage the likely outsourcing of the anodization, then bring the parts back to their shop to install the pins. But maybe your company wants to take over control of the anodization or the pins for some reason. If you did that, it wouldn't be right to show the dowel pins on the drawing that you send to the machine shop because their deliverable has no pins. You would want to make some kind of process control drawing for the pin installation. This is GDTG00440. This one would have a parts list and probably some instructions too. Importantly, the aluminum part with no pins, that's item one here, and this new inseparable assembly have different unique identifier numbers. Process control might be one good reason to go this route, but I've heard some other explanations too. One is, I think, a mistaken notion that geometric controls like this can only be applied to a monolithic object. No, we should be able to dimension and tolerance, weldments, riveted assemblies, all kinds of things. The right way to think about our drawings is that we're providing the geometric requirements to our suppliers to be verified by inspectors, or at least as if they're going to be verified by inspectors. And another thing, I see this with SOLIDWORKS where there's a different file type for an assembly and for a part. It's not necessarily easy to do the file management or to generate the parts list or you know, bill of materials that you want to see in the end. But you're smart and you can figure that out as an organization even. These lesser concerns should not stop you from the video three practice of showing the dowel pins in the drawing. The no pin approach has some real drawbacks. These arise from the near certainty that if we are using a dowel pin, we are using it as a locating feature for another part. And if it is a locating feature, the dowel pin should also be a datum feature for locating the screw holes and other stuff. In fact, it's a very good datum feature, but the hole is not the pin. They're in some relationship, but they're not the same. In video three, I showed a virtual condition gauge that would help to verify the perpendicularity of the pin. That works because the perpendicularity is called out at maximum material condition, and I can add the MMC size 2.2503 and the tolerance 0 0.0008 to find the virtual condition 0.2511. And this is on drawing GDTG 00406. Knowing this virtual condition is going to help me a lot in sizing the locating hole in the next part. And then looking ahead, it's going to help me either build or just imagine a functional gauge for checking those screw hole locations too. But I lose a lot of that with the no pin approach, and I'll show you why. Have a look at the press fit hole in this drawing, GDTG00407. This is an FN2 fit for a quarter inch dowel pin. I provide a position tolerance within the datum reference frame ABC. The ABC is based on datum features which are elsewhere on this part. Remember, we're just looking at a detail here. The next frame is the perpendicularity control, 
which likely needs to be pretty darn tight to give the pin installer a decent chance later on. But I think I have to say that these tolerances apply regardless of feature size. That's the circle S. The pin is going to press in and displace material, following the reamed hole at least roughly. For screw clearance holes and many other features, we use circle M, that's maximum material condition, MMC, which is generally preferable. MMC takes advantage of the fact that larger clearance holes are more forgiving in their positional requirements. But for this press fit hole, the size only affects the fit on the pin. The positional requirement does not change. So it's got to be circle S or no symbol. That means the same thing, RFS. But since I have the choice, I will put the circle S in as emphasis. Inspecting this perpendicularity probably requires a CMM. Any kind of gauge would probably need something like an expanding mandrel. Probably too complicated. I insert the mandrel into the hole and set the gauge all the way down to the datum M simulator. Then I tighten the screw to expand the mandrel until it's as big as it can be within the hole. I pull out the gauge and measure the size of the mandrel. In circle S, there is no virtual condition. What we're inspecting for here is the related actual mating envelope. Then I take a separate measurement just of the unrelated size of the hole. Maybe I could use the same mandrel, just not make contact to the surface datum M simulator. I take that unrelated size and subtract the related actual mating envelope, and I get the perpendicularity of the hole at RFS, hopefully less than six tenths of a thousandth. One thing that makes everything harder than it seems like it needs to be is that the hole is pretty deep relative to its diameter. And it seems especially senseless given that we don't really care about this hole except for the eventual effect it's going to have on the little stub of pin that's going to be protruding up above later on. Now back in GDTG00407, let's look at this call out for the threaded holes. And as a warning, we'll be reaching into the content of future videos here a little bit. I have to call out the position of these holes relative to their most relevant datum reference frame. Clearly, that datum reference frame should be datum M feature as primary, and the protruding stub of the dowel pin as a secondary datum feature. But I don't have the dowel pin in this part, so I have to work with this FN2 press fit hole as my secondary datum feature to locate these holes. So that's datum M. So if we were going to make a gauge to simulate this datum reference frame and locate the threaded holes, we would be back to the expanding mandrel or something like it to simulate datum N. And again, this is just because we are referencing datum N as circle S regardless of feature size. Now there might be some workarounds. If we were to reference datum N at circle M, maximum material boundary, that could enable us to use a simpler gauge with a solid secondary datum simulator. And I guess the diameter size of that secondary datum simulator would be this 0.2489 MMC of the hole minus the 6 tenths tolerance, so like 0.2483. This might be an easier way to simulate the datum, but it's inexact and a little convoluted. Maybe you would say we could get past this by putting a perpendicularity call out on the pin installation drawing. Maybe, but is it right to ask the pin installer to hold a tolerance when the most important factor, the perpendicularity of the hole, is like out of their control? And we definitely can't put the position tolerance for these threaded holes onto this drawing. Somehow we still have to use the press fit hole and not the pin as a secondary datum feature on this drawing we send to the machine shop. Pretty often I find myself in situations like this with my colleagues telling me I'm overthinking things. I get that. This is way too much thinking and hand wringing. But I feel like I didn't create this problem. The person who told me I have to make a no pin drawing created this problem for me, probably not even knowing they were causing me trouble. The drawing with pins is straightforward from a GD&T perspective, whereas the drawing with no pins is not, leading us to ambiguity, complexity, and different outcomes as we search for workarounds. And I'll say it again, as an engineer, I do not want to be pressing in these pins. A machine shop is going to have better equipment and skills to do this right and to do it cheaper. I want to make it their requirement, not mine. I'll just wrap up by saying that out there in the world, there is not always a lot of patience for gd &T. And this is one example of why. We've got to try to keep things simple and elegant, not dumbed down, 
simple and elegant. The no pin drawing fights against the GD and T system, and the system fights back with complicated callouts that carry complex implications. Okay, that's video four on dowel pins as locating features. Please like and subscribe. GD&T Guy, signing out.